12 years ago, I was allergic to wheat, dairy, eggs, and peanuts. After eating them, I'd feel tired, bloated, and depressed. But I thought that's how you're supposed to feel after eating. I didn't know any different. Then one day, I went to a doctor in San Diego, and he gave me a chiropractic allergy correction technique treatment. After one treatment, I went out and had an egg salad sandwich on whole wheat bread and a peanut candy for dessert and had absolutely no reaction whatsoever. Allergies are generally thought to be a malfunction of the immune system. The body reacts to a substance which is normally harmless to the majority of the population. According to my clinical experience, I have found this to be only half true. Around the early 1900s, when allergies were first discovered, they were thought of as nothing more than just reactions to pollen, dust, poison ivy, with symptoms like runny nose, sneezing, and skin rashes. Today, there's a whole new branch of allergy testing called clinical ecology. Many clinical ecologists are examining various irritants in our environment, like gas stoves, insulation, food, cleaning fluids, carpeting, laundry detergents, electric blankets, newspaper, the clothes from the dry cleaners, Xerox paper, and the fumes from car exhaust. These are all considered allergens today. Food allergies have a lot to do with craving. If you crave a food and eat it all the time, you're probably allergic to it. There's a substance in the brain called enkephalin. It's like a narcotic. When it gets released, it sets up an addiction. And strangely enough, we crave the foods we're most allergic to. This causes various digestive tract symptoms, such as bloating, gas, various aches and pains. If you're bloated and have gas all the time after eating, you probably have an allergy to one food or another. You're supposed to have more energy after eating, not less. If you feel tired after eating, it's an indication of a possible food allergy. After avoiding food allergens, many people lose weight without any reduction in caloric intake. That's because of excessive water weight gain due to reaction to food allergies. The most common food allergies are to wheat, dairy, the nightshade family, citrus, chocolate, eggs, corn, and peanuts. Children tend to crave peanut butter, pizza, milk, and sugar. Women tend to crave chocolate, pastries, yogurt, and coffee. Men tend to crave cheese, beer, and beef. Foods that you crave tend to be the worst ones to eat. Just like a heroin addict craves heroin, junk food junkies crave junk food. Chocolate cravings may be due to magnesium deficiency, while a craving for beer may be from a yeast allergy. Cravings are the strongest indicator of allergic food reactions. Allergy symptoms may include hyperactivity in children, migraine headaches, arthritis, and asthma. Children also may have puffy eyes, congested sinuses, and acne. Learning disabilities in children and lack of coordination may also be seen. These can all be caused by allergies and are often treated by the preservative-free fine gold diet. Migraine headaches may be due to an allergy to wheat, dairy, eggs, chocolate, sugar, yeast, citrus, red wine, red meat, tea, coffee, or corn. Airborne allergies include acacia, pine, pollen, foam rubber, and feathers. The traditional medical treatment for allergies has been allergy shots injecting small doses of the allergen and gradually increasing the dosage to produce an acquired immunity. These are like vaccinations. They're very often painful and often very expensive. They work only a third of the time, and there's a possibility of an accidental overdose, causing anaphylactic shock and possible kidney failure or even death. And worse, it's just sweeping under the rug. It's not really dealing with the problem. It's only giving symptomatic relief hiding the real cause, which is dangerous, because more serious problems may develop later. Another traditional treatment is nasal sprays or decongestants. These can irritate the mucus lining and often lose their effectiveness after only a short period of time. 
And again, they only address the symptoms, not the cause. Lastly, there are steroid medications. These are given to supplement the adrenal glands and end up depleting them instead. By contrast, the allergy correction technique eliminates the organ and energy imbalances. This completely eliminates the root cause of the problem. The first step is to identify the specific allergies. There are many different allergy tests. They include the RAST or radioallergoabsorbent test. This test picks up food allergies, but it misses the chemical hypersensitivities. That's because allergic patients have three problems in their blood. They have very high IgE and eosinophil levels and very low IgA levels. IgA is associated with chemical sensitivities. If you're allergic to chlorine or phenol or hydrocarbons, then you probably have a very low IgA. Another test is the cytotoxic test. That's a food test where a blood sample is taken and then different foods are tested in it. Various reactions are seen that way. It's not very accurate, though, or very reliable. And it costs between two and three hundred dollars. Then there's applied kinesiology. You can test which foods your patient is allergic to by a muscle response test. I have found this method to be both quick and reliable. And of course, it costs nothing. You test a strong indicator muscle and then test it again after placing the food in the patient's mouth or in a vial on their body. If the patient is allergic to the food, the muscle will appear weak. This is due to an electrochemical reaction between the mouth and the brain, which causes the reaction time of the muscle to slow down. Now I'd like to demonstrate the correct procedure for muscle testing. First, find a strong indicator muscle. The most convenient one is the pectoralis major clavicular. This chest muscle helps bend and turn the arm at the shoulder. Have the patient hold their arm straight out, level with the shoulder, palm out, and thumb pointed towards the floor. Push down on the forearm, towards the feet, and away from the body. When you test, be sure not to push too close to the wrist or overpower the patient. Hold. This will give a false reading. Push only to the point where the muscle locks. Hold. The, tell the patient you're going to push down and out and ask them to hold their arm in place. When you say hold, pause for a moment to allow the patient to resist. If you don't pause, you may overpower the patient and get a false reading. I'm going to push down and out. I want you to hold your arm in place. Hold. In order to obtain information from patients that may be blocked from their conscious memories, it's important to get their absolute cooperation. What we ask is, if your innate intelligence is willing to cooperate with us, your arm will go weak with a yes answer. Give me a yes answer. With a yes answer, the muscle will then appear weak. Hold your arm up, please. If your innate intelligence is willing to cooperate with us, your arm will go weak with a yes answer. Give me a yes answer. Hold. Give me a no answer. Hold. Are you a man? Hold. Are you a woman? Hold. Good. We got the right answer. <laughs> Excellent. Now we're going to do a step-by-step -step demonstration of the allergy correction technique. First, find a strong indicator muscle. Hold. Then test the patient to determine the specific allergen. The Victor Frank Allergy Test Kit, which contains vials of sample allergens, can be very useful to quickly identify the offending allergen. Of course, you can also use the actual substances, such as wheat, dairy, foam rubber, or whatever. Place the allergy test kit on the patient's lap. Hold your arm up, please. Hold, hold, hold. And let's see what it is. And the patient is allergic to dairy products. 